you can hear me okay yeah it stopped in between okay so um, what happened was that our, our gp asked us to contact the urologist i said i don't know any urologist he just gave us the name of the best urologist in perth and he said he works at a specific hospital i called the hospital because i was we were so frantic you know when he just said that we were not expecting all this to happen and he said uh, you have to contact the i said okay i called the hospital and the receptionist asked me what is it i spelled the doctor he's an indian doctor so i spelled his name out she said okay i'll connect you and she put me on to the doctor and he said can i speak to the doctor he says i am the doctor i said wow how did i get the doctor on the line so wow. uh, he told me grace jesus that was amazing actually my favorite scripture i'll tell you is, is isaiah 4523 i just say that regularly you know the isaiah 4523 that praise I jesus sister would you like to read it out praise god <laughs> yes I'm sorry god. you're a step yes. ahead yeah <laughs> praise god i will go before you yeah and i will level the mountains i will break down bronze gate and cut through iron bars and will give you treasures hidden in secret places that you know that i am your lord and i call you by name so that is my only scripture actually which i was always wow. saying and uh, the doctor said you come to my clinic and not only that he told me i will take you as a public patient not as a private patient wow. that was another miracle, oh, another blessing god then when i went to him and unfortunately the the insurance that i have medical insurance doesn't cover my husband has to go for prostate surgery it doesn't cover that one so we were a little disturbed you know but doctor said don't worry he himself went to the hospital records and he himself booked the appointment for us so the the operation is scheduled on the 8th of july which wow. was another blessing really wow. amazing even say how did he get the doc when i called the when i called the um, the clinic to schedule an appointment with the doctor she says how did he get the doctor i said what do you mean how did i, I just called the hospital she said but doctors in a surgery how did you get him i said i don't know i just called and the doctor answered the phone that was the first miracle and praise god my husband is okay he's quite stable and you know we are just waiting for the operation to be scheduled in uh, in in august that in on, uh, on the 8th of july but in the meantime you know that travel of ours which we are supposed to go to uk that was to be happen was was to be happening in uh, august 2020 so we got a credit because we didn't travel to covid we got a credit it uh, that it ends in june i have to book my tickets by june so i had booked my tickets in in by june to fly to uk to my son for a holiday but that was not to happen so when i called the agent she says no you can't postpone your ticket you have to pay for the ticket oh gosh again that scripture came to my mind and brother amal always says you can only call abba father when i go to work and come back i only use one word abba father i just call out abba father Praise that God. was amazing yeah God. i listened to brother brother and he said that you know so then we went on praying again saying my favorite scriptures and thanking god that we've got the tickets and we directly called malaysian airlines and they were so good enough that said don't worry we are rescheduling your ticket for no cost so our ticket is booked for wow. december thank wow. god thank you jesus praise you jesus and no cost in december <laughs> in december wow. the peak time yeah <laughs> Wow. So I be thanked by Wowie. Jesus because he has been with us all along the way you know it be at such stressful time because my husband's ill health but we I still kept thanking God that yes you're going before wow. us and clearing the way that was my only scripture Great. and that helped you know you thank see, you Jesus you are very special very uncommon blessed and highly favored yeah mm-hmm. i know i have to thank oh my, my God, God for it and when you talk <laughs> when you spoke about the doctor you know yeah. it's not easy in no. especially in australia it's not easy yeah. for you to get the consultant no. and for him to go to that extent to go and yes. book for you and make things easy for you but you know what happened teresa yeah the, the lord according to deuteronomy 31:8 the lord who goes before you he will be with you he mm. will not fail you or forsake you Yes. So do not be afraid or do not be dismayed. Yes. True. He's always with us. Yes, and uh, Exodus 33:14. He's 33, present yes. close with us. Before us. He gives us rest. He gives us rest. Yes. Oh, I use that yeah. scripture as well. 
but awesome. this one happens to be the best when we when, when we went for a for a test ultrasound test that guy at the clinic at the clinic asked which is your doctor we said um, we are just hoping dr basu he says oh that is the best doctor in perth wow. i said oh praise god just imagine it was we were not supposed to get an appointment for a month maybe you know but see how oh, god is working praise you know? jesus yeah. they're so happy oh everything will go so, well they are quite yes. confident you know no yes. and it's, a, it's actually a big thing people because even that insurance if you don't have insurance you're not covered and it's a no. big bill big bill i expected that doctor said don't worry and because you know he works at the same hospital right that public and he's got his own private as well he says don't worry forget the insurance i will look to the host and hospital records and oh, i will yeah. get it for you so amazing yeah so, so amazing. amazing god is so amazing he really knew that we were in so much for distress it's incredible that he found a way yes thank yes. you yeah oh, and yes. thank you for coming and sharing Praise Jesus. And just to say that the link to the teaching that uh, um, Sister Teresa was talking about uh, from Brother Amal is in the yes. Zoom chat. Uh, it's just a very, very short uh, clip on what happens when I say the words Abba Father. So if anybody yeah. wants to listen to that and be blessed. Susan, you can post it in the group also, Baba. Oh, praise Jesus. I will, Sister. Yes. I'll do that now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you, it's Jesus. Such, Thank you, Jesus. Such yeah. an amazing blessing. You blessed everyone here. in simple things just saying abba father yes that's the only thing i said in the car going and coming yes. that's the only thing and just thank him thank you jesus thank you thank you holy yeah. spirit thank you abba father that's all Praise that's God. it that's the key isn't it we don't have to remember a rule of of scriptures oh, we just yeah. have to connect we just yeah. have to connect um and you know i words. was i was reading something okay and it was so beautiful and i'm still getting over it So in Matthew eleven twenty eight, the scripture is, "Come to me, okay, come to me, all you who are tired." So he says, "Come, okay, come." So he calls us, "Come," and then John fifteen four, "Abide in me." So when he calls you, he wants you to cling to him. You know, just just abide in me. Don't go away. Just hold on to me. You know. and and that's what he wants from us that intimate relationship that love you know that that you know that that bond that never separates so just saying our father look at the wonders praise god all right so anyone else hello no videos on no one's talking it's only me thank you nirmala do you have a do you have a testimony okay we can't hear you can you hear me am i audible yeah, yes, you are sir. audible but okay. nirmala is not audible nirmala is not yes Yes, now it should be okay, Nirmala. Speak. No. No. We can't hear you. Hello. No. Still not audible. No. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone has to share anything? What a mighty God we serve! Praise Jesus. Nirmala, we still can't hear you, Baba. She's not connected. Okay, so shall we do the recap? Uh, Blanche, are you there? Praise Jesus, sister. Thank you. Good. Tina's just joined. I think she has a testimony too. Uh, 
All right, go ahead, Baba. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Last Sunday's reflection was on transforming ourselves. So, what is the meaning of transform? To be transformed means to be changed. In the movie Transformers, a car changes into a robot. In the same way, when we renew our mind by the word of God, our entire life transforms into being the person God created us to be. Transformation is not a one-time process and we need to keep renewing our mind every minute of the day because the devil will want to tell us his lies and throw us into guilt that God does not love us. To be transformed, we need to know about the mercy of God. We need to know to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We need to know about spiritual worship. We need to know about how not to conform to the ways of the world. Let's study what is mercy and grace. Mercy is when God does not give me what I deserve and grace is his willingness to use his power and his ability on my behalf when I don't deserve it. The prodigal son led a miserable life and when he realized his mistake, he renewed his thinking, went back to the father and his life was transformed. When he went back to his father's house, the father restored the sonship back to his son because of love and mercy. In the same way, when we renew our thinking and go back to the father, he gives us his mercy. As for my sins, I am supposed to take the punishment, but because of God's mercy, he sent his son to suffer on my behalf and cancel the punishment I deserve. When we are sure about the mercy of God given to us and our lives will be transformed. We are called to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Holy means to be a doer of the word of God. In his past life, St. Paul was persecuting the Christians and then on the way to Damascus, he met Jesus and heard the voice of God. By the grace of God, St. Paul experienced a spiritual transformation and he followed what Jesus said to him. He became a doer of the word of God. What about us? When God speaks to us through the scriptures, are we doers of the word of God or do we respond saying, I am busy? Do we make excuses? We may be clean on the outside, but are we clean on the inside? Do we renew our mind before going to church, before receiving Jesus into our hearts? Do we do what the word of God asks us to do? Living sacrifice means putting our own flesh to death. And even though it pains and hurts me, still I will do it out of love. St. Paul went through so much suffering and yet in response, he said his suffering is nothing compared to what Jesus suffered and offered his body as a living sacrifice. What about us? Do we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice? Even though it pains and hurts me, do I put my flesh to death and show love? When someone does something against me, and it is not my mistake, scripture says, I need to pray for them, love them. But in reality, how do I react? Do I love my enemies? Doing good to them, blessing them, and praying for them? 
the flesh inside of me will scream hatred against that person but when i choose to be good to that person even though it is no fault of mine i am giving my body as a living sacrifice living sacrifice means praising god during our weakness because scripture says these infirmities are only temporary when we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to him and our lives will be transformed spiritual worship is honoring god by doing what he has asked us to do we worship god not for what he has done for us but because of who he is when you offer yourself as a living sacrifice it becomes a spiritual worship because you are not doing what your flesh says but you are following what the holy spirit says spiritual worship is when we connect with god not to get personal benefits from him but to interact work and receive from him to help others true worshipers worship god in truth and in spirit the revelation that we receive from the holy spirit will set us free and our lives will be transformed not be conformed to the ways of this world the more we trust in god and the more we surrender to him the more we will recognize his mercy the more we remain in the word the more we will be able to renew our mind and deny the ways of this world when we say that i have the mind of christ it means that even if someone comes against me because i have the mind of christ i will go and love that person the world teaches us everything which is against the will of god but it's up to us to make the choice about what kind of life we want to live we are the royal priesthood belonging to the kingdom of god we are the ambassadors of the kingdom of god do we live a life like that when we choose the kingdom of god we are always looking to help edify others but when we choose the kingdom of darkness it will always be only about myself the word of god says do not be conformed to the ways of the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word of god when our prayers are not answered satan comes to condemn us filling our mind with negative thoughts that god does not want to help us in those times do we rely on the holy spirit telling us that he is our advocate our teacher who teaches us everything and guides us into all truth god wants us to interact with him at all times that is why scripture says do not be conformed to this world but renew your mind by the word of god god is merciful and full of love love changes a person and delivers them from bondage no matter what we have done in the past the moment we get into the word the old nature is crucified because jesus took that punishment for us and died in our place when we renew our mind by the word of god we will see our lives transformed god's mercy and grace flows in our life enabling us to lead an abundant life all of us were leading miserable lives but god chose us just as he chose paul to be his vessel and to carry the gospel of christ god is talking to each one of us telling us come unto me and i will transform you to go forth 
and be my disciple. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Jesus. you, Blanche. Praise Jesus, Thank Sister you. Maria. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, my beautiful sisters, e-writers. You guys are doing such an amazing job. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God for them. Praise God. All right. Uh, any more testimonies? I think Tina wanted to say something, Tina, before we start. Hello? All right. Anyone wants to say anything? Otherwise, Am I, I can... audible now, Maria? Oh, yes, yes, Nirmala, you are. Yeah, okay. So I did a little setting of the microphone. Okay, now I just want to say a testimony. Uh, we were organizing a Holy Spirit retreat at the Divine. You know, we have Divine Porta. No? We have a branch of that here in Delhi also, in Faridabad. So we're getting organized on 27th yeah. to fourth till the night, which is last night we had it, you know. But then I could not make it even for a day because suddenly my dog video, went... Video, video. Yeah, Put your suddenly... video on, Baba. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because suddenly my um, Coco was keeping unwell, you know, I, I, as I shared with you all. So I had to take him for a drip every day to the doctor. So in the morning I had to take him. And so I, have, I was missing this retreat seven days. I was feeling very low. I said, Lord, even one day I couldn't make it, you know, for the Holy Spirit retreat and the Pentecost day was last night. I said, at least I should make it, make it for the night vigil. And you know what happened? The bus was organized. And it started straight from my gate. Wow. Praise yes. God. Yeah. 8.30 in the night. And then I had to take this little fellow for a dip in the evening. So I said, Lord, I should be able to do it fast. And so in the evening, I went, got him drip, came back. I took the, uh, the bus, which was organized. I went for the night vigil and I came back. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome. Praise God. Thank yes. You. Wonderful. Another, another uh, testimony I would like to give, but we say, you know, that the Lord goes before us, you know. And uh, if we are righteous people, he does anything for us, like Abba Father, when you call Amen. out to him. So it is a, a few years ago, I was conducting adoration on the Holy Thursday in our parish, you know. So just before going out on that day, uh, a small wife spoke to me and said, take your umbrella, you know. And I said, it's evening now, there's no sun and there's no, this is not a season for rains. Why I should, and this is carry an umbrella, you know. And when I went out, I saw black clouds, you know. Just like it may like heavy rain, it's going to pour any moment. Black clouds. I said, Oh my lord. And I was wearing a nice pretty white sari. I had to go to church. I said, My God, I didn't listen to your wife. I should have carried the umbrella. But then, Lord, now I, I surrender myself to you. Please take care. Not a single drop of rain should fall till I reach the church, you know. And my dear friends, you would not believe that it all came to a still, you know, like as it was silence. You know, there was no breeze, there was no sort of the black cloud, it was really a terrible black cloud. And any moment it pour like but the moment i stepped to the church it started pouring heavy you know and all the rest of the people who Praise came were all jesus. drenched all drenched and told me nirmala how come you're so dry <laughs> and that Praise you to God. <laughs> so, so it's so wonderful another one great testimony i want to give you my dear friends because i was praying to the holy spirit because every day you ask for testimonies and i would not say because it suddenly you don't remember you know I said, Lord, please help me because you've done great uh, wonders in my life. Uh, help me to remember them and speak it out, you know. So a few years ago, you know, I was running, I had a business, I was running my own salon, you know, my wellness uh, center. And uh, I left the rice on the gas. It was in slow. I locked my house and I went away. I completely forgot about it. Rice cooking on the gas. Wow. And I had gone wow. to my, this is nine o'clock in the morning I left. And suddenly at 12.30, I remembered that I had left the gas and I, I forgot to switch it off. And I, oh I said, Lord, I'm not fully burnt, <laughs> but I hope there's no danger in my house. And I was walking towards my home. I, I was expecting some smokes coming out from the, from the window. When I came out and opened the door, I was expecting some smell of burnt uh, food, nothing. And I went and saw the gas. It was still burning, my dear sisters. And the rice was not overcooked also. Leave Praise alone. Yeah. Be wow. to Jesus. Yes, yes the gas wow. was burning for two and a half hours. And the rice was not burning as far off. It was not even overcooked. It was so beautiful, you know. I said, awesome. thank you, God. Who can else do? You know, he says it protects his people. Yes. Praise yeah, Jesus. No? So wonderful. So These are wonderful. really important testimonies, Sister Nirmala. Yes. Amazing yes. testimonies. I yes. just um, pray, I pray, my Lord, you have done so many great wonders in my life. Help me to remember. I shared it with my sisters. So this will build up everybody, all our faith once yes. again. You know? So there are a lot of wonderful yes. testimonies like that. 
as I keep remembering, I keep sharing with you because we should share it and we should Amen. remember it also. I do remember, but at that moment, you know, uh, it does not come. So, so this I said, I must share with you such great. Uh, another, if we have time, I can again share another one miracle also. Do we have time, Maria? Can I share? Yeah, yeah go ahead. It's so see, when, I, when, I would go, yeah, when I would go to conduct retreats in uh, Faridabad, you know, and uh, the, uh, the, um, the director, he was not, one day I went and he was not, he says, Nirmala, where were you? Uh, the director was trying to look for you. Your number was out of reach. Uh, the assistant director was, uh, Father Martin has gone to Mumbai and he needs you there. Would you be able to go? I said, but Father, just to, uh, tomorrow itself, he wants to go. I said, but I don't know if we can make it. I said, that, first of all, it's difficult to get tickets, you know, train tickets and flight tickets is not possible. And he says, don't go alone, Nirmala, take somebody with you. Take one of your friends. I said, Father, you said you send somebody according to your choice. Uh, we will take. So another lady was asked to come with me. I came to the res railway reservation uh, um, counter and the, all the tickets were booked. No trains were available. You know, I had to go that very night. No train, next, next day. I was no trains, even the flights were not available. So when I went to the, there was one train, it was a Janta train, it was a local train, you know, and uh, the counter, the ticket fellow says, ma'am, Ismail Majjai, you don't go in this because it's very dirty and it's never in time. It's never in time and don't go in this, it's very dirty. I said, what to do now? I said, no, if, I said, Lord, if God wants me to take me in this train, I will go. This train will be the best for me. So I said, book it. I booked it for my friend also. The lady was coming with me. And then when I went, this lady was brown. She says, Nirmala, didn't you get any other train? You shouldn't have done that. My God. I says, no, uh, Anne, her name was Anne. Come with me. God will take us. If God wants to take us, God will take us. The next day, on the way, there was so much of traffic, so much of traffic on the road. We could not make to the station. The train was around 2 o'clock. And I'm still on the road on, at 2, a little far off from the station. My husband was getting panicked. He says, let's turn back. The train is gone. No point. I said, no. If God wants to take me, he'll take me. I'll go to the station. Wow. If I see the train is gone, only Praise then I'll Jesus. go back. Then we went to the station around 2.15. I just saw the train entering. Wow. Praise yeah. God. And that aunt was looking at my face. She says, normally of faith. I said, yes. I said, if I'm going from the God's service. If he wants me, if I, if I forget the train, I'll, I'll, I'll know that God is taking me. If the train goes, then I'll know it was not God's will that I should go there. That's it's as simple as that, you know. And both my husband and she was totally panicky. You know, their whole the whole route, they were, saying, they were doing, you know, it's no use, no use. I said, no, be calm, be calm, you know. And they saw the train entering at 2.30. The train was at 2, you know. And, and once we entered the train, this train was supposed to be a very dirty train. At the very next station, you know, I saw people coming to the train, washing the train clean. Wow. Right, they came in and they cleaned up the whole washroom. They cleaned up everything. It was pink and span. <laughs> For you. Such, and that lady, Anne, was just looking at my face, you know. And as we sat and as we started praying, you know, sitting on opposite each other, there were a lot of people in the train. And then some people came and said, ma'am, we're going to a church like this. A lot of miracles. I started sharing. I started sharing. A lot of you know, from people from other bogies also came and sat with me, you know. And there was one man sitting next, uh, next, uh, yeah, next to me. And Anne was looking at his face because his ex was not very happy the way I was sharing all the miracles and all that happens, you know. He was having a lot of threads tied around his hand, you know, man of another faith, you know. I kept, I was very cool. And they said, ma'am, Mary Libby Pratnagara, please pray for us also when you go there. Please give us this address. We also would like to go. There were Muslims, there were people of different faith, you know. And as he was going after two or three stations, that person was getting off. He told me, ma'am, I'm working for the railway. I keep traveling. Would you please give me all the addresses that I would like to visit over there? Wow. Um, you know, I would like to see your God, you know? Awesome. And he got up. And then we had got it, this this retreat center. I'm going to Mumbai. I must have heard no, that uh, Thabur Ashram. I was going there. It's a little away from uh, Mumbai. It's in Kalyan, you know, Kalyan. So when we reached Mumbai, you won't believe the train reached half an hour early that day. Wow. Praise it was, uh, nobody could believe it. Not the staff says, yay train, they're always late. Two to three hours, this train is late. And this is the first time in history this train has reached half an hour early, you know. And, and don't forget that the train started late in Delhi for me. Wow. Praise God. Praise you know? God. He's such a wonderful God, you know. Yes. You know, and you make it sound like the way you speak, Nirmala. I, I was thinking of Psalm 4610. Pardon? Yeah. I was thinking of Psalm 4610. Yeah. Be still and know that I am God. Yes. We have to be calm, you know. We know because he is there with us all the time, you know. Why should because I should say if I'm going for God's service, if he wants, he'll take me. Anyhow, he'll take me. Praise if God. if I if I'm not able to make it, I will I will accept that it was not God's will. That's it. Wow. As simple as that, you know. And it was God's will. He took me. 
He cleaned the train for me. He took me to the foot time. <laughs> yes, he waited. He made way. the train wait for me to enter before. Before I go to the station, the train was not allowed to come in. See, yes. he's a marvelous God, you know. And, and he didn't want Anne to complain, saying, where did you and, bring yeah, me? And Anne was kind of, maybe, maybe God sent her with me, you know, to increase her faith, you know. This is, praise God. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I always believe this, Mari. Even when I'm on the road, if I'm held up somewhere, I feel maybe there's some danger ahead waiting. That's why God is holding me here, you know. So I don't panic, you know. Yes. Sometimes people, because especially in Delhi, traffic is bad. But I feel that, no, if maybe God, even I have another miracle, I was supposed to go to, for a meeting with Archbishop, you know, uh, Anil Kuto, you know, diocese. And I was so late that day. My God, I was feeling so embarrassed. For, I came out early from home. I started early, but yet on the road, something, something kept happening and I was held up. And I was half an hour late. I was feeling so embarrassed. My God, uh, bishops and all the dignities be waiting and I'm going so late. It is so embarrassing. I said, God, what do I do? What do I do? You know, I started early. But you know, when I went there, Bishop was not there. He was held up in a meeting somewhere. He came half an hour after I went. There you go. <laughs> Praise God. Praise so Jesus. Learned, I've learned, he taught me. He's trained me. You know, he says, don't. Yes. And you come here. You. And you come here and train us to be calm. Yeah. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Thank you, my and darling. So just to say, and Sister Nirmala, what was important about your testimony about the the weather when you were on your way to church was mm -hmm. that when you realized that you had had hadn't followed the Holy Spirit's prompting to bring bring the umbrella, you immediately yeah. repented and said, mm -hmm. "Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I'm really sorry." As in, you told me, and I didn't I didn't follow your instructions, mm -hmm. um, I, and I'm surrendering the situation to you now. So that was the key. You realized you repented, you changed your thinking, and then you surrendered. And he was able to work in your situation. And you were the only person arriving dry at the church. So praise God and thank you, Jesus. I mean, they blackmail my God, you know, all the time. <laughs> I'm late. I know I, it's not my fault. My God, I know I'm late. It's my fault. Please forgive me, you know. But it's nothing's impossible for you to know, help me. And he does it. You know, he's so sweet. He comes to my help. Praise all the time. God. We are human beings. We do errors. And then I say, Lord, please forgive me. I We're spirit I'm beings, right. sister. Correction. We're spirit beings. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Very Praise nice. God. Yes. Thank you. Praise God. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Baba Jude, over to you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Sorry for the very short invite. <laughs> Wonderful testimonies. Wonderful Praise God. things. <laughs> I know Sister Deborah is coming to India a long time back, but she asked me not to say it to anyone. Oh, yes. Today we made her say it. <laughs> she wants to keep that a secret. Praise God. Praise God. So we were studying about transformation, an important part in our Christian life, we saw uh, how Paul has been transformed. And uh, so we can say that transformation is of two parts. One is uh, changing your old self to a new self. And the next one is being continuing in that one by putting your self to death. Praise God. So we were seeing about uh, four parts of the transformation. One is we saw about mercy, correct? Yes. The next one is sacrifice. And the next one is spiritual worship. We yes. stopped till spiritual worship, if I'm not wrong, right? Yes, spiritual worship we didn't do. So let's go to Romans 12. Two. So worship is something which uh, excellence of character, dignity, or it's a uh, uh, Ionic, uh, what is that? Okay, uh, a respect giving to God to what He is. Okay, worship is something. Uh, if you, if I want to make it clear, worship means not about singing songs, clapping hands, kneeling down, or uh, walking or something like that. Worship is spending time with Him for what He is. Okay, he said to Moses in the wilderness, in the desert, that I am who I am. Who I am. So we need to spend time with God for what he is. It's a kind of uh, excellence of his character. 
not of receiving anything from him. So what happened uh, in the middle, uh, worship means, oh, okay, praise and worship. We have to give thanks and then uh, we need to clap hands, praying in tongues, that's it. Our worship is done. That's wrong. Worship is something you need to having a fellowship with God for what he is, okay? That's what worship is all about. Reverence to God, yes, correct. Reverential, yeah. Okay, let's go to Romans 12, 2. Baba Enoch? It's not there. Can someone read it? And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. Uh, do not be confirmed to this world. Okay, if you see another translation, it will say that. Uh, okay, let's go and see. AMPC. Okay. Do not confirm to this world, this age. What is that confirm? Fashioned after and adapted to its external and superficial customs. But be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourself what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and accepted and perfect in his sight for you. So he says that what is the meaning of confirmed? Anyone? Confirmed. To adhere to or to follow. Okay, anything? To live by the world standards. No, no, no. Confirmed. Praise God. Okay, in other words, it says that to be like. To be like. To resemble as assuming to taking a form of. So here he's saying that do not conform to this world. Have you uh, take a big uh, cake, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a mold. Mm -hmm. So when you bake a cake, whatever mold is there, whether it's a heart or a square or a circle or a rectangle or a whatever mold is you are keeping, uh, that cake uh, that cake uh, that uh, batter will take the shape of that particular mold praise god yes Correct? so as here paul says that do not conform to this world is same way the world is giving you a mold according to the world that mold which is given by the world is uh, uh, what to say, uh, given by this Satan. Okay, uh, who is this prince of this world is Satan? Yes. We learned that in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the, uh, uh, what is that? 1 Corinthians 4, 4. 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians? 1, I think. One God Corinthians. of darkness. It's 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Oh, sorry. In whom the God of this world, if you see that, there is a small g. Yes. If you see in the down, it's, it's big g is there. So, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which not believe. So, when, when the world gives you the mold, it's going to blind your spiritual eyes. 
so that's what the word of god says paul says that do not be conformed don't take the place or don't change according to the world's standard what is the world is teaching you world is teaching you about the philosophies the world teaching about the idols world teaching about the ideas which is not aligning to the word of god praise god so if you see in the life of jesus when he did all good things the pharisees were trying to uh, find for fault among him so okay why is that because he was teaching the truths where pharisees could not able to digest because all this time the pharisees made the laws very complicated but jesus made it is very simple mm. for example uh, if you if you take alcohol alcohol is made up of i think last time i said here or somewhere i said okay not here another group a uh, alcohol is made up of some kind of uh, soya sauce something like they say that okay the pharisee says okay if you take soya sauce with some of the ingredients in your house or you you cook it with the soya sauce in your house that is a sin mm. okay so whatever ingredients it's used in the alcohol if you take it separately it is a sin so the pharisee is brought everything very complicated they said that you should not commit only if you commit adultery you are a sinner but jesus said even if you think wrong about some women in your mind it's sin which they did not understand but that is the truth that's what the world says the world will always says you just do it it will not affect but what the word of god says is entirely against the world the world is against the word and word is against the world why because world is full of carnal and the word is full of spiritual so that's what he says do not be confirm see most of our christians live in this world okay but we belong to the kingdom of god simultaneously remember that okay we are spiritual beings in the spiritual world as well as human beings in this humans in the natural world god has given us the five senses so that we could live in this natural world also god has given you the sixth sense called the faith sense to tap into the spiritual world but mm-hmm. all these studies teaches us that the spiritual world is the real world that is the parent world so our thinking and choosing should be from the spiritual world so a, a decision to be taken by you whether are you going to live according to the word or you going to live according to this world praise god praise god okay so this is what confirmed do not be confirmed to this world okay so world is giving you a mold and if you go into that world in, into that mold the world will turn you something like that it will turn against the kingdom of god but paul says that if you do not transform according to this world but you transform to the renewing of your mind the next point what we are going to study is renewing of your mind you know can you share to romans 12 2 again and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god okay what is this renewing of your mind it is changing of my thinking exchanging my thoughts my ideas for god's thoughts and ideas praise god, god. thank you jesus and how we are doing it by the word of god every day you are coming and sitting in that teaching what you are doing you are renewing your mind mind praise god whenever you go and sit in the teaching the word of god will help you to renew your mind each and every time 
there when we speak about lot of scriptures one scripture is going to affect one person hmm so what that scripture does the scripture changes the thinking of that particular person okay that day i was uh, uh, teaching to my team on the uh, how to discern the voice of god one sister messaged to me that uh, all these days uh, i was doing confession i was doing this i was doing that uh, but i was thinking that why did god did not answer my prayers why is not answering my prayer why is not talking to me after listening to the teaching i come to know that god is talking to me 24 bar 7 but i am not yes. recognizing his voice praise praise god hallelujah so she made a correction now what i have to do now i know thank you brother for giving this wonderful teaching Praise God. So that scripture uh, teaching is going to help. What happened to that sister? That sister, that scripture which we taught on that made her to renew her mind, saying that the mistake is not from God. The mistake is from yourself. So every day we come and sit in the teaching. It's not like that. Uh, okay, today is Sunday. Women and fire. If you don't come, Sister Maria will call and uh, scold us. no don't like don't come like just like that anyway if you don't come she will not scold you sister you will scold never okay i love right. them oh, please yes. go so it's it's not about okay uh, uh, it should be not about a law mentality it should be out of love okay when i go to this meeting someone is going to preach it's not some it's not brother johnson it's not sister josie not it's not brother jude it is the holy spirit speaking Amen. on through their vocal cords praise god so have that thing in your mind and come definitely holy spirit will talk to you that is what renewal of mind is all about you already renewed you uh, the another mind will say no no you have so much of things to do this thing to this thing to when, when sister was asked uh, that i need to take the class i was in another uh, teaching teaching the global praise god so i i thought that okay papa also said this thing which is also important but the holy spirit uh, uh, when i was taking my uh, lunch the holy spirit said me which is important which you going and getting god. that thing or teaching the word of god wow so the holy spirit reminded me which, uh, you have to think see the holy spirit did not say that which is important for me he just said uh, conviction you think what is important to you please god are you called for teaching and preaching the word of god anyhow that shop will be there definitely if i go tomorrow i'm going to get it but if you miss this class it's going to be another week if next week papa comes it will be next week i don't know when i will get the chance please god so i made a decision okay let me go and teach see this is what renewing your mind is all about the holy spirit as brother said my thoughts i have to go yes that is also important but more than that preaching and teaching the word of god is important yes. because somewhere some soul has to be saved hmm i am i am preaching not only for you this is going into the youtube someone is going to listen to that their mind will be transformed how your how the transform taken takes place reviving of your mind that uh, last week i said about uh, the monarch butterfly which was travels from mexico to canada to lay eggs how this transformation happens it is inside of them but their mind has been renewed okay this is what our nature is all about so in the same way everything is inside of us now you have to renew your mind according to the spirit aligning your senses to the voice of god so how we are doing it we are coming and listening to the word of god meditating the word of god as we resist the world we intentionally renew our minds with god's word when you memorize it when you ponder it and you apply it okay you take a scripture and i said that one scripture will talk to you definitely take that scripture memorize it memorize it not in the memorizing like what you do in the school okay i'm memorizing you have to get an understanding and you just ponder it and apply it praise god that is what renewal of your mind now the holy spirit starts speaks to you even though the voice of a stranger you will hear you will clearly hear the voice of god what is important 
So when you do that, now God will do a supernatural work in your life. That's what the mercies of God, uh, the living sacrifice, spiritual worship, uh, do not conform to this world. You have to do all these three things, all these four and five things. When you do that, it is makes easy for God to work in your life and to transform us into a supernatural human being. Praise God. We always say that God has gave his word. Take a teaching. Listen to it day and night for two days. Praise God. If you do not do that, take a book and a paper, sorry, book and a pen. Play it and write it word by word. And, and once you finish that, start reading it. That way you are going to renew your mind. Okay. Anywhere it is going to take a labor. Okay. You have to labor to enter into its rest. Hmm. So once we renew our mind, now God chooses to perform his transformation work in our life. When God, when, uh, when, when Saul was on the way to Damascus, he encountered Jesus, okay? He encountered Jesus and now God, uh, Jesus said to go and stay in this place for three days, okay? He never said that there will be a person by name Ananias will be there and he will do this, this, this. No, he said that you go and stay in these three days. In three days, what he was doing? God has put a vision inside of him saying that this is what is going to happen. So when he started to meditate that, well, who are you, Lord? What I'm going to do for you? What, me, what do you want me to do? We started to meditate on those things. Now what happened? The vision came into him saying that there will be a person by name Ananias will be there and he will baptize you and you will be able to see and then you can, after that, it's your work. So God has cho already choose everything. Okay, he went he, and the same vision went to Ananias. Ananias went and called brother. And that's what a transformation takes place. So our part is one and God's part is one. Unless and until we do our, uh, we do not do a part, how could you able to uh, ask God for his transformation work in our life? If you want to do anything, everything of this world, I will do this, I will go to the pub, I'll go do that, I'll do that. At the same time, I go to church, God should transform me. It will never happen. There is a set of rules you have to obey. If Joseph or Daniel became the governor of the, uh, Egypt or Babylon, they had labored 70, 13 years of prison. Praise God. Even in that prison, what they did, they were applying the principles of God. How many circumstances they would have got, but they did not uh, choose to disobey God, but they operated in love. So we can read, study, and apply His word, but we need the Holy Spirit to transform us. Unless and until we did our things and apply everything in our life, you are giving a way to the Holy Spirit to transform us, then He will give us the promises and everything. Can you go to 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18? Anyone wants to read, my dear sisters? I can read. Go ahead, Debra. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Okay. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 18. But we, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, uh, this verse, 18, can you put in uh, which translation? Thank you. Go to compare. Eighteen. Uh, trans. Okay. See here. Okay. Uh, you put, come down. AMP. 
ruthless okay transform correct and, and we feel. all with unveiled face continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the lord are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory which comes from the lord who is the spirit did you see that now our face has been veiled now by hearing and hearing the word of god our face has been unveiled continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the lord what is the mirror what is the mirror he says so have you seen mirror most of the women are here have you seen the mirror you don't see mirror right have you seen mirror or not yeah if you, if you, if you comb your hair you won't see the mirror we <laughs> when most of the time we are before the mirror only <laughs> press card so what is the mirror what is the mirror is, is saying here reflection see as in a mirror so every day god is saying you have to go get into the restroom and see the mirror so the reflection okay do you have you seen yourself yeah it shows your true self in the mirror i mean i mean your face i mean your face and whatever oh, you know so the mirror it's shows a your face yeah, yeah reflection yeah the reflection okay it, it never shows your face it shows your reflection reflection all reflection. right that's it yeah okay praise god so god is saying with unveiled face seeing the mirror every day go and see the mirror every day see the mirror here says about the word of god the bible with the, with the unveiled face continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the lord so how you continue to see the mirror at the same time you have to get into the bible which gives the glo- what did you do? share that you know glory of the lord now are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory now progressively transforming our old self has been transformed into a new mm-hmm. self praise god jesus one degree to another degree of glory to glory now which is important is which comes from the lord who is the spirit mm-hmm. so when you do your things correctly and you beholding the bible every day day and night sitting and listening to the word of god now it is the holy spirit which is inside of you helping you to transform to one glory to another glory yes. that's what paul transformation is all about so when he did it exactly what he what god wants him to do when he start doing it now he could see supernatural things happen in his life which he did not saw that at all so now the holy spirit which is inside of him helped him to transform to one glory to another glory even though paul was a very great fighter even though the people would came and fight against him throw stones against him he did not retaliate but he is responding to love if someone rejects him he is not staying in that place he goes to next place preaches there and again he comes to this place and he start preaching the word of god again so all the time he was depend on the holy spirit that's what in verse 17 says that but lord is the spirit and where is and where the spirit of lord there is liberty there is freedom when you depend on the holy spirit there is always freedom amen praise god how it is freedom it means when you pray in tongues and when you go in peak and praying in tongues you can stop ask the holy spirit to stop the holy spirit will stop but when you have the evil spirit afflicted you cannot stop it unless and until he stops he will never he will never stop at all that was the freedom is all about the spirit of the lord gives you the freedom you have to make a choice praise god so he says that do not be confirmed 
we transforming by renewing of your oh mind. mind renewing of your mind change your thinking replacing your older thinking with new and higher thinking to the yes. word of god change your aligning your thinking according to the word of god the word of god says be sober and be vigilant what is that align your thinking according to the word of god don't conform the thinking of this world so when you are ready to do this when you are depending on the holy spirit and the holy spirit is ready to operate on your behalf okay again go to romans 12 to kjv Should I read? Yes. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise God. Only by transforming and renewing your mind, you can able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So every time we study is that will of God. What is this will of God? The Bible. Okay. The scriptures. Okay. Joshua one. Um, meditate word of God day and night. No, no, that's okay. But what is this will of God? If you ask me what is the will, if you uh, if uh, pass Sister Natalia, what is the will of God for you? What you would say? Follow His commands. Okay, that's it. To believe no. in Him. Okay. To do what He. I mean, to be. To obey. To imitating obey Him. Word. So many answers. Okay. <laughs> Not one is correct. If you ask me, oh, what is the will of God? If I can clearly say that to preach and teach the word of God to the ends of this nation. And so, Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah. So that is the will of God. Bible is full of the all the promises are the will of God. See, when uh, Paul transformation, it's not a, a normal transformation. Okay, uh, he spent three years in Arabia. Before he actually began and preach the gospel, go to Galatians one eleven to seventeen. Galatians one verse eleven. Anyone else wants to read? Praise God! Someone else can wants I read? To... Yes, go ahead. Yeah, read slowly. Yeah. 111, right? Yeah, 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. That till 17, sister. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, one minute. So here he's saying that the gospel which has been preached to him, it's not after the man. Okay? And for neither he received it of man. No one preached him. Neither no one was taught him. He is talking about the gospel. He never talking about the book of Torah, the law, laws and other things. That thing what is being teached by uh, uh, Gamaliel or something like that. Okay, I am not sure about the phrase. So here he is preaching, he is talking about the gospel, which is the uh, good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is gospel? Good news of Jesus Christ. Good Very good. I God said and you said that. Power of God. Huh? Praise Jesus. What is gospel? Gospel is the power of God. Gospel is so good to be true. It is the revelation yeah. of salvation. So good to be true. A revelation of salvation, yeah. Gospel is the birth 
death and resurrection of our Jesus Christ Jesus for Christ. what? To give us an eternal life. Nice. Gospel is the power which gives you the power to go and get into salvation. Okay. He's talking about the gospel, not the Old Testament. Okay. Now he's saying that for neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it. No one taught to Paul. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ, he, he learned the yes. gospel through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, next 13. Go up. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. So now he is talking about his, uh, his uh, conversation of time, what he did it in the past in the Jewish religion. What he did was persecuting the church of God and he wasted it. Okay, and profited in the Jewish religion. Okay, go ahead. And profited in the Jewish religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly jealous of the traditions of my fathers. Okay, here he's saying profiting the Jewish religion means he was above many equals in my own nation being exceedingly zealous of my tradition. He was very much, uh, he, uh, he wants to equal the tradition of his fathers and he wants to do much more exceedingly to the God. That's what is zealous of tradition of my fathers. He was so jealousy of what his fathers did and he want to do exceedingly, exceedingly greater than that. Okay, now 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, now called me by his grace. Praise God. Now he's saying that he has been separated from his mother's womb. What is that separated from his mother's womb? The old sin nature has been taken out. How? Called me by his grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For what? Next one. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood. Praise God. Now he is saying that he has been called by his grace to reveal his son in me. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ inside of us that I might preach him among the heathen. So the will of Saul is to preach the gospel about our Lord Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, that is the heathen, okay, Gentiles. Immediately he confirmed not with flesh and blood. Next, 17. Go up. Na neither went... Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. I ate in also. Then, then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. So when the Son of God, uh, Jesus Christ, is inside of him, revealed to him, he spent three years in Arabia to get the revelation. Praise Jesus. And then once he got everything, he returned again to Damascus. And after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him for 15 days. Yes. When he went to see Peter, no one accepted him because of the things he did. It. But when he, he said that 
how we met Lord Jesus Christ in Damascus and how we stayed in the uh, Damascus for three days and then uh, how his name got changed and he went to Arabia, he studied there, got all the revelation from the Holy Spirit and now he discerned what is the will and now he started to preach and teach the word of God. So, in our life also, to want to know the will of God means you have to surrender your entire life to him. Praise it's Jesus. not like that, okay, God has said that I need to preach and teach the word of God. Okay, let me do it. No, it will not be, it cannot be done. That's what it says, you have to prove. You have Fact. to prove. How are you going to prove? By transforming yourself. When you trans, when Paul got transformed, he came to know what is the will of God. If you see, if I get this preaching, teaching, and all, I spent uh, almost uh, 2000 from 2019 almost three years, same like Paul, and in Zoom, hearing and teaching the word of God in the middle. God, Holy Spirit spoke to me how I'm going to do this for how long I'm going to do this. This Zoom teaching. What is the future for me? The Holy Spirit told me, Mark 16, 15. Go and pre your work is to go and preach and teach the word of God. Wow. Praise wow. God. When when in when the when 2020, six months, eight months, ten months passed, uh, I was asking the Holy Spirit what I'm going to do. Is that Zoom is going to continue? How long? Oh, yeah, surely the pandemic is going to end. After that, what I'm going to do? I did not know that I would get so much of uh, uh, opportunity to preach and preach the word of God. The Holy Spirit said to me only one thing, Acts 16, 15. I pondered on that one. Wow. So Please when change. we surrender our lives to God in view of his mercy, worship him, and everything we are and resist the pattern of this world, and renew his mind, or sorry, renew our mind by the Spirit, then we will be able to know, discern God's will for us. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So now you, you have to prove, how are you going to prove? You have to prove that by mercy, putting yourself, uh, your uh, living sacrifice, spiritual worship, do not confirm to this world, and then you have to renew your mind. When you do all these things, now you can able to discern the will of God. Now you read this Romans 12 too. Last part. Can you put that scripture? Enoch, Romans 12 too. Yes. So read and one, one and from one and two. A living sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not confirmed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise God. Now he's saying that you may prove. So when you do all these things, you may prove and what you're doing is good and acceptable and perfect. That is the will of God. Can you go to Psalms 37 4? Thank you. Holy Spirit. One of the things renewing your mind is, right, read it. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. 
delight thyself also in the lord what is the meaning of this delight enjoy delight it's a um, a presence of full of joy yes okay your delight you have to delight yourself in the lord okay also in the lord don't delight only in the material things you delight in the lord now he shall give you the desires of thine heart this this scripture has been uh, uh what to say G uh, gives a different meaning if you do not understand correctly okay he shall give the desires of thine heart means he will not going to fulfill all your carnal desires no that's wrong okay give the desires of your heart means i'll give you my example my desires when i came in, came into the word of god is carnal okay i want this i want that i oh, everything is benefiting my own kingdom but not the kingdom of god but that not, not come to pass because even i wrote in the vision as well about to to i wrote it in the vision as well but it did not came to pass at all so oh, you know share the scripture ma praise god okay now what happened when i came into the word i day and night i started to delighting myself in the lord when i uh, when i start and preaching the word of god it uh, when i take a session it gives so delight uh, and so interest in me now side by side when i did not uh, concentrated on my desires then i started to only concentrating on the word delighting in the word now what happens slowly by slowly slowly the carnal desires what is inside of me went out and the desires of god's plan came into my heart praise, praise god. god now all of a sudden if you see back my life i do not know when my desires has been changed from carnal to spiritual praise god Praise Jesus. Now I do not have the desires that fulfill our Lord. I need this. I need this. I need this. I need uh -huh. this. Now, no, Lord, tell me where I am going to preach. Praise God. I am studied this. To whom I have to give the teaching. God. How I am going to build the kingdom of God. How this comes by only the renewing of our mind. Only a person who who mind is renewed, he can able to delight in the Lord because. when his mind is renewed he doesn't care about how what is happening around his mind there are 10000 things happening around me but i do not care about those things at all my work is to delight in the lord i'm committing my way and he is saying that when i commit i trust also him and he shall bring it to pass my work is to do everything what god asked me to do whatever below, whatever needs god will all, always is going to supply me but to operate in that in in this kind of faith it needs guts and that guts comes only when you renew your mind according to the word of god see about life paul 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 has a good uh, income money fame power everything was there when he came into the word everything has been lost but at the same time what he got he got a spiritual encounter with lord jesus he could able to get uh, write so many books in the new covenant so that people generations after generations after generations after generations are studying from his book in the new covenant if you would have been still as a pharisee of pharisee no one would know that who is paulus who is solus and now everyone know who is paulus praise god praise jesus so, so the question is are you willing in light of god's mercy to offer your body as a living sacrifice everything to him resist the world if you if when you going to resist the world the devil, uh, the world is going to give back to you when i make a decision that i'm going to preach and teach the word of god there are so much of uh, things came back to me thank god but i know who is that enemy is all about how could i able to understand this is the enemy by renewing of my mind praise god yes praise so when you do all these things the spirit 
will transform our minds to be more like of that of Jesus Christ, then you can say that I have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. If you do not renew correctly what the word of God says, and if you say, I have the mind of Christ, that's of no use. A sister was teaching, uh, sharing a testimony when she was uh, searching for her uh, debit card, right? other card. She could not able to find it. Who gave the scripture to her? The Holy Spirit. Praise God. How, how the Holy Spirit? Because she knows that, okay, if anything goes wrong, I have to go to the top boss. I have to mm -hmm. ask my Lord. And the sister who was, uh, uh, I don't know, I forgot the name, who said that uh, the husband was admitted in the hospital, was planning for a... Teresa. Shweta. Teresa. Teresa, okay. Praise God. How she, how she was handled the case? Praise God. By renewing of her mind. Yes. So the spirit will transform your mind. You don't need to transform your mind. You need to do step one, step two, step three. If you do step one, God will show you step two. And then you take step three, God will show you step four. But for us, what we do, Lord, show us the 10th step. I'll go there. I'm not going to do this. One, two, three, four, and five and all. So for everything, there is going to be a labor. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So for a transformation by renewing a mind is not a one-time process. It's a everyday process. So a transformation means a complete major change in someone or some, some, something appearance form. See how this uh, butterflies and this uh, eagle transformation, everything is inside of us. So in the same way, when you accepted Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior, God has put everything inside of you in your spirit. Now you have to operate in the spirit. And when you operate in the spirit, the spirit is going to take everything out of you. Everything is inside your belly. Okay, write this point. It is understandable It is understandable to think to think and transform okay to think that transformation of christians means it is understandable to think that transformation for christians means To change, to change our inner selves through the word of God. Praise God. Okay, it is understandable to think that transformation of Christians means to change our inner self. To change our inner self through the word of God. So transformation is not outward behavior. Okay, it's not based on your actions, it's based upon your root. That is your thinking. And that thinking has to come from the word of God. Okay. Uh, we have time, right? Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians 3.18. Again, the same scripture. We, learn, we can learn many things from that. Okay, anyone else wants to read? 2 Corinthians 3.13. Come on. I can read, Maria. All right, Maria. 
So the scripture has to come. Enoch. No. Go to uh, AFV or AMP. Go to AFV. 318. Mm. But yes. we all, but we all with uncovered faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, as in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. So this verse doesn't say that are being transformed by improving our behavior or changing our selves. It says that being transformed. Okay, now clearly understand this being transformed, it's not a present or it's not a future. Sorry, it's not a past or it's not a future. It is a present. Being means present, correct? Yes. Okay, now it says that mirror are being transformed, which means it is a process which has not been completed. Hmm. It's a present continuous. If, if, if a person who was in the English, uh, they, they'll know that. I think I'm saying correct. So this being transformed is connected to our beholding the glory of the Lord. He says that uncovered faces behold the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. How you are seeing yourself every day in a mirror and you are combing your hair, applying your powder, uh, threading, lipsticks, face powder, everything you put, same way, you have to look into the Bible and you being transformed. It is a present continuous. Praise God. Praise God. So when we behold the Lord in our fellowship with him, something wonderful happens. Praise God. When we, with the unveiled faces, are beholding and reflecting the glory of God, so what we are we doing is, when we do it every day, we are being transformed. We are in a process. Which means, he infuses us with the elements of what he is and what he has done. What we are studying with the Bible every day, what we are studying in the Word of God every day, you come and attend the Zoom meetings, uh, there are a lot of thousands of you, uh, ten thousands of YouTube things are there. What we are learning there. Every time when you go and sit in the teaching, the when the renewing of mind happens, now the Lord infuses with the elements of what He is and what He has done for each and every one of us. Now, when you understand those things, now you know that oh, my God has done all these things for me. All these days, I did not know this. Now you understand that everything is inside of you. Now it helps you to transform according to his image. That's what it says. Where is the scripture went? Enoch, can you don't remove the scripture. Don't remove the scripture. Let it be there. So being transformed, present continuous, into the same image from glory to glory, even as the spirit of the Lord. Praise God. So this note says that being transformed note says that we behold the Lord, he infuses with all he is. You can write down. This note says... When we behold the Lord, he infuses us with all, he infuses with all he is and has done. That's it, okay? This note says that when we behold the Lord, he infuses with awesome. all he is and has done to us. 
so infuse means to fill or refill he infuses us with all he is and has done to us is it right to us brother? yes yes praise god praise god now uh, put this in uh, ampc go to compare we will see one more word over there come put compare come down in ampc okay go moira sorry yeah and all of us as with unveiled face because we continue to behold in the word of god okay stop as okay. continue to behold in the word of god so the word of god clearly says that we need to continue okay continue to behold in the word of god hmm. as as in a mirror the glory of the lord are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another for this comes from the lord who is the spirit praise god so how how an ugly face or when you came up of uh, out of the travel or how your face and hair looks like that when you get into the mirror and you make it and you change from that to that uh, image in the same way when you see the bible mirror day and night when you ponder it meditate it and uh, speak on it now you have been transfigured into the very own image in ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another your present glory to another glory as a christian born again believers our work is to move from one part of glory to another part of glory every year or every month we have to grow we should not come down praise god yes every year or every month we should grow we should not count down if you are coming down if something you are missing you have to check what is missing thing in my life hmm. okay uh, thank you i uh, get an example where once uh, papa was landing in dubai okay uh, his uh, the person who came to pick him up said that uh, there is a cousin nephew or cousin i'm not sure uh, niece or nephew with uh, is uh, as afflicted with the evil spirit and uh, he said that when he when you get time you come and uh, pray over her so that uh, uh, she could uh, get into the word so papa said okay let's go immediately from where we okay. landed in the uh, dubai airport and from there they started directly he now yes you know we will go okay then and there he wants to finish so they went so this bro this brother went and papa was sitting beside so he started to speak so he was uh, teaching about the scriptures and everything for about 5 10 minutes all of a sudden that girl turned to that uncle and faced uh, and she spoke in a uh, male voice hmm what would what would be your reaction my goodness stunned girl speaking to her with a male voice to this person oh. she got that brother got shocked oh. so papa was waiting and this brother was saying uh, papa what he is going to say but papa was sitting and he was listening to what he did not know what to do then for the holy spirit spoke to papa there is a problem with there something she was wearing inside it okay so she went the holy spirit told to get uh, those things out and he removed it and he took directly to the mirror okay she did not he did not speak anything through the mirror and you and he asked what do you see and that male voice is speaking still now i said that i am not talking to you i am talking to the spirit of that particular girl so when 
when that mirror uh, when she saw the mirror uh, that girl spoke something else papa said no i can see jesus in inside of you i can see jesus face and then he started to explain what you have to do scriptures after scriptures after scriptures after scriptures and then she got delivered immediately praise god so this brother asked him uh you didn't get shocked he said that why should i get shocked and 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 you were not speaking anything i was waiting that you would speak you would start but you were not speaking anything you were saying that no no i was getting ready and uh, i was waiting for my top boss the holy spirit to say when to go praise god so there is a time and follow the voice of the holy spirit Praise so when the holy spirit talked to papa yes this is the time get a, go ahead and start to do everything get into the mirror tell her that jesus did not created to be like this he created to be like a imitator of jesus you you are called to do this thing this thing this thing praise god thank you jesus so how this has happened the renewing of your mind so transformed into the same image so our work is to every day day and night you need to get into the word to transform into is same image go to romans 8:29 kjv okay go to compare come down this one word should be transformed should come come down come down next we choose next for new next 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 there's one verse i just remember okay it's not there okay oh, go to kjv only so here he says that for whom he did for new he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the first born among many brethren so he is saying that to be made the same as he is for he for whom he did for no god chose as everyone before this world he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son so he knows even before we come into this planet earth he already predestinated every one of us to conformed to the to the image of his son mm-hmm. so for us to change like christ is the predestinated form created by our heavenly father that's what the scripture says do not be conformed to this world because you are already predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son praise the lord thank you jesus lord thank you jesus god so this is what transformation is all about Praise God I finished the second part anything any doubts any questions anything want to be shared So amazing it's Praise all God. about renewing the mind which is a big exercise Yes and this is uh, again I'm saying it's not a one time process 
Hmm. It's every day because every day. every second every minute this minute you will be transformed to this image but all of a sudden you do not know what is the devil has planned the next minute you might fall again you have to renew and transform you come back to your uh, uh, to you have to transfer to the image of the sun because we have been predestinated to be like that praise god immediately bounce back mm. yes that's what Uh, that's what paul see how paul transformation is that's what uh, i have, i am having so much of uh, role models before coming into the world okay after coming into the world i decided that i am going to be like paul because he no uh, for disciples at 12 disciples jesus taught them but paul was fully in the revelation of the holy spirit oh mm. how he links that see romans 8:29 he says that we have been already predestinated that to be conformed to the image of the son so in romans 12 to he is saying that do not conform to this world you are already pre planned that you have to be in the image of his son lord jesus christ you to be like him you are a peter or you are a jesus to someone else in this planet earth praise god yes Amen. praise god thank you jesus <clears throat> hallelujah praise god but the most beautiful thing is when we are called right the holy spirit is always there to convict us to bring us you know to remind us mm-hmm. and so we go back praise That's, god thank you jesus praise god thank you jesus okay moira yes i'm here thank you lord we thank you abba father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord for this beautiful teaching by brother jude thank you lord that you have already predestined us right from the beginning before the world was even created and you have called each one of us lord and we are here week after week it is not by our doing but you have called us and we are here to renew our minds because you are transforming us lord each and every day each and every moment each and every week you are transforming us to be more and more like you jesus thank you holy spirit that you are guiding us you are leading us you have called us and you will never leave us you will never forsake us thank you lord for helping us renew our minds to the word of god that we are hearing each and every day each and every week as we come here thank you lord that you are guiding us in every step of the way till our very last breath thank you holy spirit we make this prayer through jesus christ our lord amen 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 amen, amen and amen. baba can you put it off baba enoch